Hi everyone, welcome back to another JS Solve tutorial. In this one, we're gonna create a nonlinear solver for optimization using the JSO package. So this is the second tutorial in our in our series. First one was on linear operators.jl, which is a specific package. And now we're gonna create a more general uh, tutorial in which we're gonna use many different packages. Okay. So these packages are not in the 1.0 version yet. They are still in 0. Point something, but they will be released uh, on a stable version soon. We already use them for many of our um, of our work. First, I already installed some packages. I'm using a specific environment for this tutorial. I'm gonna use plots in case I want to plot something. I always do that. And up in models, Solver Tools and Solver Benchmark are gonna be the main packages here. Is my status I have an RP model 012.2 and let's get to it so first of all JSO the organization as you know is an organization for nonlinear optimization our main focus is the development of optimization solvers and uh, we're gonna start with the very basics of creating a new solver essentially what do you have to do to create a compliant over with our API okay I'm gonna see why I say compliant in a in a moment this may be the first part of two or three in creating a solver with JSO the first thing is deciding which solver we're gonna create so since I want to use a solver for constraint optimization so I can show every function I'm gonna write down that I'm gonna work on the problem of minimizing f of x subject to c of x equals zero. This is sufficiently non-trivial to work on. And I'm gonna create a very simple solver here, which is gonna be very bad, but uh, that's not the focus, it's not, our focus today is not to create a good solver, it's just to understand our uh, packages. So the solver that we're going to create is essentially the Newton solver on the uh, KKT conditions of this problem. So these are the KKT conditions or the optimality conditions of our solver of our of this problem. Uh, y is the Lagrange multipliers, and uh, X is the first order solution to this. We're going to create a solver for uh, for this problem by looking at these equations. And applying Newton method here. So we have something. There you go. Our optimization solver will be essentially to compute the solution of this system and then walk in this direction delta x, delta y. At first, we're gonna use the full direction since this is a Newton method. And we're gonna see how bad it will be. Okay, we're gonna test on a few on a few. Uh, problems. So the first part is how do I access all this information from a problem? We're going to create a simple problem here, NLP models, and we're going to use a DNLP model, which is a way of defining a model to a function. In this case, let's use the Rosenbrock function. And I'm gonna pass. Oh. So this is the Rosenbrock function with starting point minus 1.2 and 1.0. Since we are working with a constraints problem, constraint problem, I'm gonna create a constraint here, which is just that the sum of x1 and x2 should be one. So my preferred way of defining constraint problems is that um, I first have a C, which is the C of X in this case. And C here can be either equalities or inequalities. The way it's defined in the general NLP model is I have a function, which is a vector, and I have a lower and an upper uh, bounds to that function. So this is something like uh, C Lcon less than C of X less than Ucon. Okay, so this is a function minimizing the Rosenbrock function with 
sum of x1 and x2 equals to 1. Okay? This is the first NLP model. And inside the NLP model, or the, our NLP, we're going to have NLP.meta, or meta, not sure, which has some information about our problem. NLP.meta is a specific struct, is a NLP model meta, and it contains a lot of information here. Okay? The whole list of information that you can, you can find in our docs. But the main ones are the starting points, the nlp.meta.x0, the number of variables, bounds on the variables, and you have constraint related, like the number of constraints, the lower bound of the constraints, and upper bound of the constraint. These are the main ones. We also have starting Lagrange multipliers approximation, which if they are not provided, they are going to be set to zero. I usually don't use them. Since most problems do not provide as a starting uh, approximation. And um, you can also query information about this um, constraints you can see the j fix free inflow range and up which are the fixed constraints the free constraints which which are essentially useless the infeasible constraints these are essentially uh, if a constraint has upper bound and lower bounds that are incompatible the lower bounded, the upper bounded constraints, and the constraints that have both lower and upper bounds. So in our case, we only have equality constraints, so jfix should be equal to only one, because we also only have one constraint. So this is the vector of constraints that are equalities. We could also ask if this problem is an equality constraint problem or unconstrained problem and so on. Okay, there are some functions to query this information. So the first thing is that we have NLP.meta, which has a lot of information that we want to use. And the second thing is how do I get the value of the functions? So the functions are the objective function. I'm gonna use a starting point here to, to do the calculation so i have the starting function by the way i'm gonna copy this i have the gradient of this function the hessian so in this case the hessian is a matrix only with the lower uh, triangle and uh, in this particular model, the ADNLP model, which uses forward div, the hashing is dense, so you should um, keep that in mind. I also have the cons, which are the constraints, and jack, which is the Jacobian. Okay, so these are the main ones. I also have, in this case, uh, worry about... I also have to worry about the Lagrange multipliers. And since I have Lagrangian multipliers, I also have the Hessian of the Lagrangian, not only the Hessian of F. So in this case, I'm using zeros, which is not a good example. And my constraints are linear, I forgot about that. So let's change the constraints to something non-linear, so it's, it's a little bit more fun. So x1 squared plus x2 squared equals 1. So all of these are the same, but when I get to the constraint, Jacobian and Hessian part, they change a little bit, okay? So now I have essentially everything that I need for my problem. I have here this Hessian of the Lagrangian, I have the Jacobian, and I have the gradient of F and the value of C, the constraints vector, okay? So I have everything here. For a full API list, you can check the documentation. And uh, 
I'm going to skip the sparse part for now. So since I have everything, I just have to define my problem. And the first thing is the input of an NLP models compliant. I don't like the word compliant. Well, I actually like that word, but I'm not sure if that's the best word. Of an NLP models compliant solver is something like this. I'm gonna use essentially, um, I don't want to use SQP, but it is an SQP. So it is one mandatory argument, which is NLP, an abstract NLP model. And then you can have other arguments. Usually the ones I have are max eval, which is the maximum number of functions evaluations. I have max time, which is the maximum time, of course. I have a tall and r tall, which are absolute and relative tolerances. And I usually have something like the starting point in which I can change without changing the problem or arguments for the, for the solver itself. So the first thing is this, the only mandatory argument to be the NLP, which is an abstract NLP model. So I'm going to create a simple model here, which doesn't have, um, there's, there isn't much to talk about it. I'm going to use, uh, ones as a starting point for the Lagrange multipliers and I'm going to use the starting point for the starting approximation for x. I'm um, going to um, create some functions so I don't have to call the full function all the time. Uh, C of x is cons NLP X and J of X is the Jacobian NLP X. I'm gonna create the dual and the primal uh, measures. So the dual measure is essentially the nabla of F at X. So I don't need that anywhere else. So I can just use it here. By the way, I'm not gonna implement a very efficient solver. I'm just worried about how to implement some solver. Maybe in an advanced tutorial, we're gonna show how to make this solver a little bit better. So duo should be zero, primal should be zero. Duo and primal are not the norm of those values. They are just the vectors because I'm gonna use them as right-hand side as well. So I don't want to, to check if the norm is small yet. And I'm gonna create two tolerances here. One is for the duo, which is gonna be a tau plus r tau times the norm of duo. And another for the primal, which is just gonna be a tau. I usually use uh, only the absolute tolerance for the um, primal feasibility, because usually you are, you are looking at it on a, in an absolute way. So I could create two r tau's one for the for the dual feasibility for the dual measure and another for the primal measure let's just use one for now so what i like to do here is create two flags one is sold and when is this problem solved when the norm of the dual is less than the dual tolerance and the norm of the primal is less than the primal tolerance and I create two and I create another to, uh, flag which is tired so tired is a is a measure to see if the problem has made too many evaluations or took too long to complete so first I'm gonna create a tired time and I'm gonna create a delta t which is time minus start time since we already made some computations I'm going to set start time at the beginning. So if for some reason the time to compute these guys are too long, the delta t is going to be large enough so it stops in the first iteration. 
So first, it is tired if the elapsed time is larger than the max time, or if the sum of counters, so there is a function for that as well, is larger than the maximum number of evaluations. So counters are, are how many times I have evaluated my function. So I have n eval obj, which is the number of times I, I have eval, evaluated the objective functions, and I have the same thing for all other uh, counters as well. And some counters sums the counters. You can look at the counters by, by um, entering nlp.count. So these are, this is not supposed to be accessed this way, but these are all the counters that we have used so far. So what's my optimization loop? Why or not sold or tired? I'm gonna do these things. I'm gonna reuse these guys a couple of times. So copy, paste. First thing is what's the system? So here I'm gonna reuse j of x and I'm gonna, let's see, that's it. I'm gonna create h of x here, h of x y here. I'm gonna create the Jacobian is here. I have the duo there. I think that's it. I'm gonna create delta xy as the solution of the system symmetric. Let me create the W here for the system, which is hx. I have nothing in the right hand side. So n of our n con is nlp meta dot n var nlp meta dot n con so i have n var n con here which is where the jacobian transpose should be but we are only storing the lower triangle of this matrix um, in the second line i have jx and i have another zeros this time because they are actually zeros. So I'm gonna use the symmetric of H slash dual primal. So I just want to solve this system. I'm not worried about efficiency. Of course, here I have a symmetric matrix and I am only storing the lower triangle of it. So I could use a Cholesky method. And uh, in advanced tutorials, I can show you how to use uh, Krilov.jl to solve this in a matrix-free uh, matrix method. But for now, let's ju just use the backslash. Delta x is going to be delta xy1 to n var, and delta y is going to be delta xy n var plus 1 to the n. I'm going to happily walk the whole step. And for now, I'm just going to return x and see what happened. OK, so I am updating the, the number of I also have to update this guy. So I'm uh, updating the maximum time and I'm automatically updating the number of evaluations that I'm doing. So this cannot stay in a loop forever. So this is safe. But since I don't want to wait too, too long, if it is not working well, I'm going to set a, a, a small number of maximum evaluations. So our problems are, our first problem, NLP, is Rosenbrock with x1 squared plus x2 squared equals 1. So this has, I believe this has two local solutions, one close to minus 0, 6, and another, the, the actual solution, which is 1, 1. Oh, sorry, this is actually not getting 1, 1. Another solution, which is close to 
something else. I was thinking about x1 squared plus x2 squared equals 2. So let's see what happens here. Um, NLP, I actually don't have. I don't need to use this. NLP here. I'm going to call SQP NLP and see if it fails because it has an added linear algebra. H, X, Y. Singular exception. Great. So this matrix is... Oh, I forgot to set L. So there we go. This is the first solution, I believe. But since we don't know for sure, let's check if the objective value here is... All it is kind of small, so it seems to have worked. The constraint here is small, so it has uh, it has found a feasible solution to our under our tolerance. The gradient plus Jacobian times y. So I don't have a y here. I forgot about that. So this is not small because I forgot to reset. So one thing that one thing that happens frequently is that when I solve two times the same problem, I forget that I'm updating the sum of counters. So the second time it's actually has it actually has less than the maximum evaluation. So I have to reset the problem so we can reset the the counters that it used. So here it is. It's, it's actually not a very good value. So it maybe hasn't found a good solution. After all, or I forgot to update J of X. It's also a possibility. So here it is. It has found a decent solution under our tolerance. Okay. So I update J of X, update dual primal, all the topping conditions, and it has solved the problem with. I forgot this. 22 evaluations. So since I'm using one evaluation here, so I have one, two, three evaluations in the starting. I have another one here. And inside the loop, I have one, two, three, four evaluations. So I'm making three plus four times something is 22. I'm missing one evaluation. Oh, I also have one, two, three evaluations here. So Minus 3 is 19, minus 3 is 16. I made four iterations to solve this problem, okay? It hasn't found a feasible uh, global solution, but that's fine. 